We all know that Intel are expecting to release their brand new 11th gen Rocket Lake S processors pretty much very soon. And there are many, many questions that I'm sure you're asking. The first being, you know, how many pluses have they slapped onto that 14 nanometer process? But second of all, well, that all comes down to something much more important. That comes down to price. And if what I've seen is pretty much anything to go by, you may, just this once, be pleasantly surprised. With the announcement of Z590 motherboards, it seems like Intel are starting to fight back. And with processors around four to eight weeks away, the leaks are coming in thick and fast. Now, some may say that it's a bit too late with the huge market share that AMD's gained over the years, but I'm gonna actually give Intel the benefit of the doubt this time. I mean, it can't be any worse than what 10th generation processors failed to deliver, can it? Jokes aside, the Belgian retailer Two Compute has accidentally, see what I did there, leaked pricing for the entire range of processors for the new Rocket Lake S series. <laughs> I love it when they accidentally do things. So what is the standout SKU? What sounds nice and juicy? Well, of course, the i9-11900K is the one that we wanna be looking at with its eight cores, 16 threads, and a boost clock frequency of 5.2 gigahertz and a price of 604 euros, including VAT. Not bad. But Andy, hasn't the 10th gen 10900K got more cores and a slightly faster boost speed? Why would Intel, I don't know, fudge their newer chip? I mean, you have to look at it, yes, it does, but it's now at a point where it's not just a numbers game. The new or upcoming 11900K is actually said to be around 20% faster in single core performance. And based on other leaks, could actually see the 11900K outperform the 5900X from AMD, again, in single core tasks. Drilling down further though, performance leaks in CPU-Z when compared to the 10900K doesn't exactly look promising. And PUBG at 1080p paints a very different picture, throwing a lowly Ryzen 5 5600X into the mix when compared to the i9-11900KF. The key takeaway though is the pricing. And if these leaks are anything to go by, then the 11900K actually comes in at a similar price to the Ryzen 7 5800X. Do AMD need to watch out? Um, mm, probably not, no. But you do, because it may not actually be the right time to upgrade your graphics drivers, especially if you're using Nvidia. Nvidia released their latest drivers on the 7th of January, and it's not exactly gone well. With loads of consumers complaining that since the update, their applications have been randomly crashing and gaming performance seems to have completely taken a nosedive. Nvidia has kind of confirm that by updating to the driver, your gaming performance may randomly drop, crashes may occur within Adobe Premiere Pro, and your screen may flash and or flicker after the update. Yeah, nothing too serious then. I mean, it doesn't just stop there. We've been hearing about people having issues in other applications as well, such as DaVinci Resolve. As a DaVinci Resolve user myself, I'm actually glad we're using the Studio Driver instead, which doesn't at this time seem to be affected. The annoying thing is that the driver is still available to download. So if you don't keep your ear to the ground, it could end up being a timely mistake for you as you then have to look at rolling back your driver and all that and just who's got time for that? For the majority of gamers who don't keep a firm eye on their frame rates though, you probably wouldn't even really notice. And as Nvidia haven't exactly confirmed anything, the driver will of course stay online. Sticking with Nvidia, there have been talks around mining specific GPUs coming out that use the newest Ampere architecture. I mean, with the huge high point of $40,000 for a single Bitcoin being recorded, who wouldn't want in on the action? Money, 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 money. Now, you may remember that we saw cryptocurrency based mining cards for the 10 series, but it seemed to have kind of died out when it came to Turing based cards, probably due to the slump. I mean, this was kind of expected as mining took quite a large dip during the 20 series release. But with this new lease of life and the huge gains that Bitcoin has made lately, it was kind of inevitable that we'd see these types of cards again. As I mentioned, who wouldn't want to make a tidy profit off of the back of it? Hey, Nvidia? Hey? Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Now I know what you're thinking. I'm sick to death of mining. I just want to get my card to play my games on. This is getting ridiculous now. I ordered on launch day, but there is hope. Nvidia commented that 
If crypto demand begins, or if we see a meaningful amount, we can also use that opportunity to restart the CMP product line to address ongoing mining demand. Okay, Andy, that's all well and good, but what does it mean? Well, this means that the GPU specifically for mining will go to them, meaning that the gaming cards will go to gamers. But why wouldn't gamers buy mining cards and miners buy gaming cards? Surely one is cheaper than the other, right? Well, as you may remember, mining cards typically don't have display connectors, so you wouldn't be able to boot them up in the way a typical gamer would. This means the cost of producing them is typically lower than a gaming card. And as mining is all about profit, it makes sense for the miners to buy them and let gamers buy the cards that are literally made for them. It's not exactly a one-size-fits-all solution, but do you know what is? The E-Technics baseball caps. With a resizable strap and sleek design, you'll be the envy of everyone. Available to buy on store.etechnics.com. Click the link in the description to find out more.